Let's shine by seeing the best in all of us and by treating you here, right in your hometown. Let's look out for each other. Let's stay healthy. Let's shine together. Hi, I'm Sherry Harlan, program host for Let's Talk Together. Today, we are talking about fl the flu season, prevention and treatment. And today, joining us, we have Kim Schneider and Kelsey Glover and Dr. Matthew Vail. And welcome to all of you from our infectious disease group. Thank you. Um, before we get started, I'm going to start with you, Kim. Okay. How did you come to read? How long have you been here? So I joined Reed's um, workforce in 2003 in the critical care unit and then went into infection prevention in 2016. Kelsey? So I've been with Reed since 2011. Um, started off as a tech on 5 North and then worked my way to the manager of infection control now. And Dr. Vail? I've been with Reed since the start of COVID, uh, uh, coincidentally. Uh, so, uh, the spring of 2000, and uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, welcome to all of you, and we're happy yep. that you're part of the REIT team. Thank you. The uh, winter months bring along flu, RSV, COVID. So, what can we do? And Nate, can you tell us some of the symptoms and some of the testing that goes along with each of those three? Yeah, so with COVID, RSV, and flu, there are a lot of similar symptoms, unfortunately, so it's kind of hard to distinguish which is which. Um, with the flu, you want to make sure that you're watching the fever, the aches, and um, also the fatigue. Um, with COVID, it is more so the difficulty breathing, the fatigue, and a sore throat. And then with the flu, or excuse me, with RSV, it's more um, of the wheezing. So again, you can see multiple symptoms through um, each of them, but focus on those main um, symptoms. And one of the things with, especially with, I know I personally were, were, I want to ask, so who's at high risk? Because often I've traditionally just hear RSV with children. So how does that work? So for RSV specifically, you're absolutely right, Sherry. It's the very young. Uh, who get the, the more frequent uh, infections with RSV and get the more uh, serious outcomes, including, you know, respiratory distress and, and uh, bad pneumonias. But also uh, those over the age of 65 are thought to be at increased risk for worse outcomes and more uh, prolonged symptoms from RSV. As well as like pregnant women? So when you're looking at pregnant mm -hmm. women and other risk factors, that's mm -hmm. more defined for influenza okay. uh, than I believe RSV. Certainly, you know, pregnancy immunocompromising states such as cancer treatment or underlying HIV uh, or end-stage renal disease, those things have our risk for all, all three disease conditions, but really more well-known for influenza and then also, uh, also COVID. The, um, and what's some of the best ways to prevent the spread? Uh, no, let's go with each individual, <laughs> right? Let's start with the flu. So they're, they're very similar. So one of the number one things that you can do to help prevent the spread or pr help protect yourself from flu and COVID is get the vaccine. Um, RSV, there is a vaccine for adults age 60 years or older. And um, for people who are pregnant between the weeks of 32 and 36 weeks. Other things that you can do to help prevent the spread of illness, um, such as flu, COVID, RSV, is make sure you're washing your hands and make sure you're washing your hands frequently. Um, make sure you're getting the fronts, backs of your hands, you're washing them for a minimum of 20 seconds. 
Um, you want to avoid being around sick people. If you are sick, you want to stay home so you're not spreading your illness to other people. Um, clean and disinfect your surfaces often at home if you have an ill person in your house. Um, again, you want to stay at home until you're at least fever free for 24 hours. If you have been diagnosed with COVID, um, CDC is recommending you isolate at home for a minimum of five days. If you are fever free, you can go out if necessary, but you need to wear a mask until day 10. Um, and then another question on COVID, probably for you, Dr. Vale. I, I recently had COVID and one of the questions was, what happened between, I think the public's confused because at the very beginning, it was a 14 day isolation and now it's moved to a five day. Right, so, right. So I think the CDC was being uh, cautious mm -hmm. uh, in the beginning in 2020, 21 and going into 22. Um, the and erring on the uh, on the side of uh, over over uh, doing the uh, isolation period. Uh, studies came along uh, using the PCR technology to diagnose uh, people when they're sick, but also how long they are shedding the the virus. And what was seen with that technology, and also with just good old-fashioned epidemiological studies, where people weren't uh, getting others sick from COVID after that five, five, really seven-day period. But the, the drop-off is really in the four-day range. So you're in, you know, once you become symptomatic, your ability to really infect somebody drastically starts to go down at four days of symptoms. And I'm thinking also we didn't have vaccines in the earlier. Right, right, yeah. The vaccines definitely, uh, you know, decrease your uh, morbidity and mortality from COVID uh, uh, illness. Um, I believe there's some data that they decrease how long you're contagious. Uh, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure that that's worked out science yet. The, um, well, back on, um, I think we were saying with how to prevent the spread and isolating at home. Now, once again, let's highlight the vaccinations because we want to make sure that people are getting their vaccinations. Right. I, I think that's a, a, a the main thing to do, right? <laughs> right. Uh, I mean, certainly there's infection control, things you can do, keeping distance, uh, uh, being particularly cognizant of droplets, uh, which is the way these are all four or all three <laughs> diseases are transmitted. But, you know, the vaccines, especially with COVID and 21 and 22, just, you know, undoubtedly save lives. Uh, and granted, as more people developed immunity through the vaccination process and also natural immunity through getting exposed to the virus like yourself, the mortality we've seen with COVID has dropped drastically, which is fantastic. But that period, you know, especially amongst the elderly uh, uh, prior to the vaccination and then after the vaccinations was pretty mark, you know, just remarkable, uh, you know, the millions of lives that were saved through vaccinations. Um, you know, with influenza and RSV, it's a little bit of, of a different comparison than it is with COVID. So in a general, in a, in a you know, season, you know, the fall and winter seasons for influenza, about 10% of people are going to get sick, okay? If you're vaccinated for influenza, you decrease your chance to 5% of having symptomatic illness that you go out and get tested for and or treated for. So, you, you know, you decrease that by half. And especially amongst the elderly and uh, pregnant uh, persons and immunocompromised, that decrease in disease, uh, symptomatic disease, also correlates to you know decrease in mortality. Although the mortality from influenza is not near what it was when we from what we saw in, with COVID in 20 and 21 and 22, uh, there is still you know 10 to 50,000 people each year who die from from uh, influenza as their primary diagnosis. Um, RSV, you know, as everyone uh, has probably heard or, or seen, 
You know, that vaccination is new this year for uh, those uh, individuals uh, 60 or older. Um, uh, there's no doubt it provides a robust antibody response uh, similar to the COVID and influenza vaccinations. Uh, the, it decreased in clinical trials uh, the amount of symptomatic illness compared to people who weren't vaccinated. Uh, whether it'll have also a mortality benefit is it probably too early to tell. Uh, the clinical trials weren't geared for that. But uh, certainly, I think it's uh, something to strongly consider uh, and different from, you know, the COVID booster this year, although the CDC wants us to get away from saying that because I think it's going to be seasonal COVID and seasonal influenza. Um, the RSV right now is a, is a one-time vaccination, and uh, uh, I anticipate it's going to be beneficial, uh, similar to influenza. Uh, and preventing symptomatic illness. And just overall, we always want to make sure we about flu or just a regular flu shots. Right, right. And, uh, you know, flu is bad illness to get. You know, we're <laughs> outside of, you know, the people who do end up getting pneumonia or pneumonitis. You know, no one wants to have fevers and uh, be off work, uh, you know, for several days. Uh, uh, so, you know, again, different from, you know, the COVID data where the vaccine so far has prevented people from getting really sick with COVID. Inf the influenza vaccine prevents you from getting sick really at all by 50%. So that's a pretty, you know, remarkable difference. So when, so if someone falls ill, <clears throat> what should they do? Do they see their physician? Or will they immediately call for infectious disease <laughs> or would yeah. we prefer they see their physician? Yeah, so you can see your primary care provider and there's also urgent care, which is a great resource that we have in our community. Um, and you can get tested there for the flu um, or COVID or RSV as well. There's multiple different tests that you can have um, completed for that. And the treatment? To uh, what's some of the treatment options? I believe Dr. Vell might have mentioned some, but the different uh, treatment and where can they get care? So the treatment options mm -hmm. for the flu, there are antivirals, so antibiotics will not work with these um, viruses, COVID, flu, and um, RSV. So the flu, there are antivirals that can be prescribed. They're not over the counter, so they have to be prescribed by a provider. There are treatment options for COVID. RSV does not have any like dedicated antivirals that will help do that. Um, it's more supportive care when you're going through that virus. You can also take over the counter medications to help relieve some of those symptoms. Okay. Well, we want to quickly, but we want to thank you all for joining us today. And we have our slide that shares shows where you can get care. And um, and once again, thank you for joining us. So let's talk together. Thanks. Thank you. Let's shine by seeing the best in all of us and by looking out for everyone's well-being. Let's shine by staying true to ourselves while surging toward the future. Let's shine with the best care possible and by treating you here, right in your hometown. Let's look out for each other. Let's stay healthy. Let's shine together. Welcome back to Let's Talk Together. And in this segment, we have Stacy Fee from Reed Urgent Care in Richmond, and Val, Val Morris from, well, actually, Val is in Richmond. Yes. And Stacy is in Connorsville. Yes. So, um, and for both of you, let, now we're going to start with Stacy. Tell us uh, how long you've been at Reed and uh, where, where and how you came to Reed. Yeah, um, I came to Reed in 2009 as an emergency room nurse, which I had already been for about 10 years. And then in 2016, I joined the Urgent Cares as a nurse practitioner. And Val? I have only been with Reed for a couple of months. Um, I came here from Community Health Network in Indianapolis. I was there 
for a little over 18 years with, with them. And um, I had managed uh, some of the urgent care facilities and also we did an employer health. So there was several service lines related to well, welcome Employers. both of you and thank welcome you. Val to read. Yeah, thank you. Uh, my first question would be, if we fall ill in the next few months, which could be, uh, we, we definitely know in the winter months uh, that's an, that could possibly happen, what are our treatment options? Do you want to take that one okay. or you want me so to take that So we have three different locations. Uh, there's an urgent care in Connorsville and urgent care in Richmond. And then there's a ready care clinic in the Meyer store. Okay. For, um, and one of the one of the newer things we that are offered is on my way. Yes. So can someone want yes, to explain what absolutely, on my way is? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, one of the things that we look at are the patient um, satisfaction and their reviews that they submit after they've had an appointment. Um, I'd say probably the number one concern that we hear on the feedback are the wait times. Um, while this is our busy season and any of our urgent cares minus ready care, um, so Connorsville and Richmond, we could average anywhere from 70 to 100 patients a day. And while we're trying to cut down on some of those wait times, um, we have implemented the on my way. So basically you would go online, let us know that you were on your way, and then you go into our queue. So as we're calling folks back, you're basically in line holding your place prior to coming. So that's uh, our attempt at helping to reduce those wait times and be respectful of people's time. That's amazing, especially if you have a sick child. Yes. There's nothing worse than you're already waiting. Yes. And they're sick. Yes. So you just want, you want treatment as quickly as possible. Yes, absolutely. The, um, the other thing is, so what, um, if you can explain to me the difference of the Read Ready Care versus at urgent care? Yes, um, the Reed Ready Care, that's our retail clinic there in Meyer. Um, probably the biggest difference there is you're, you don't have x-ray. So the sprains and strains, you're probably better off going to Richmond or Connorsville where, you know, if there is a need for an x-ray, then we could do it at those two locations. Um, so that way if we're dealing with a fracture or something a little more involved, then there's not a delay in getting treatment. And what about if you feel, are feeling for the, you had the flu? Yes, that's definitely something we can treat at the ready care clinic. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, the ready care is great for people who have um, cold, flu, things like that. And also it's a good one for sports phys physicals. So let's say you have to go get groceries and oh, your child also needs a sports physical, pop on in. We can take care of that all in one shot, so. And um, on here, when it, we, on our slide, it's showing some of the um, why patients should use, um, could utilize Read Ready Care. And one of the things like eye irritation and infection. Oh, absolutely, yes. Uh, just various infections, just pretty much anything that doesn't require an x-ray. Yes, absolutely, yeah. The, um, and what's some of the difference and similarities of urgent care in Richmond versus Connorsville? Mm. Do you want me to talk yeah, about go that? ahead. Um, I would say they're very, very similar. We we offer the same services, so we have X-ray on site at both locations, Connorsville and Richmond. Um, we can do the same testing, you know, tests for flu, COVID, RSV, strep, mono, um, and so we can see all those um, illnesses and minor injuries there too. As far as procedures and suturing, we can do that as well at both locations. I ask this because often when I'm out in the communities, the various communities people might assume maybe just because Richmond was larger, mm -hmm. they had different services. Yeah. And I want the uh, public to be aware yeah. we have the yes. same services. Yes, yes. Yeah. and um, one particular difference with Connorsville, as uh, we're speaking to some of the folks down there in Connorsville, is you could also do lab work at that 
facility in Connersville. That's not something we see a lot anymore. Um, so depending on what your needs are, if you need to be treated for a cold, but you also have an order from your physician wanting you to get you know, blood work, you can do that there as well. As well as outpatient x-ray yep. Um, yep. is offered there too. Yep. So not just x-ray for the urgent care, but if you have an order for an x-ray, yes. you can come in there any anytime, eight to eight, to get that done as well. Yeah. What are some of the uh, reasons for visits to urgent care that you've both seen or just something interesting that you've seen. Do you want to take that? Um, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, we see a wide variety of things for right. sure. Um, and sometimes people come there with too serious of injuries or mm -hmm. illness, and certainly we will um, screen them, do their evaluation. If we feel like they need more evaluation or they're beyond our care, we will get them to the emergency room. Um, but, um, you know, the, the minor illnesses and injuries, certainly um, we can take care of there. And, and I think often people say, I'm sick, I have to go to the emergency room. Yeah. And we like to highlight that so many of those things can be handled through yes. the urgent care. Yes, absolutely. Yes. And that the emergency room's busy enough. Yes. <laughs> so, and that's why we have an urgent care in both locations. Correct, yes. So just try more of an educational tool that yes. people will learn where they can go to yes. get those, the various treatments. What's something that you would like something that you could share on why people could, should come to an urgent care? Well, I would say, um, you know, if we're looking at the, the number one reason is we know sometimes it's difficult to get in to see your primary care physician. And if that is the case, and let's say there's a week, two week wait, um, then it's very difficult to, to get the, the treatment that you potentially need. So that's, that's probably the best fit for the urgent care, um, you know, especially with those acute things and the illnesses. And there's another thing with open scheduling. Can you share what open scheduling is? That's um, far as in relation like the feature so for instance if i when we're saying go to your provider yes what happens if you don't have a provider and you were at urgent care we would definitely make that referral um to see about getting you a primary care physician um and the girls are very good as far as making sure that's that's one of yeah a question that's asked every there is time. a uh Reed has a physician referral line, yes. and we um, give that out often um, to establish care with a primary provider. Um, there's also a residency clinic that we have information on, too, um, that yes. they can often get um, patients in pretty quickly mm -hmm. um, to be seen. Because often people have a tendency, as I like to say, they wait and make a, a $100 problem becomes a $100,000 yeah. problem. Yes. Oh, yes, that's because true. Because they keep putting it off. Yes. And so if you were at the urgent care, then that puts you as part of, of a process to get you to yes. uh, a physician to get you a primary care. Yes. Right, yes. absolutely. We have um, also now, and can you tell me about the hours that your locations have? Uh, Rich, Richmond and Connorsville are open seven days a week, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And then the Ready Care Clinic is open eight to eight Monday through Friday, and then eight to three Saturday and Sunday. Okay. So it is open on the weekend. It mm -hmm. is, and that also includes um, holidays, but at reduced hours. Um, you could receive services on Thanksgiving, Christmas, and any other holiday. Um, the two major holidays being Thanksgiving and Christmas, those are reduced hours from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. So do you, I can't help, I have to ask you. So uh, do you often see the people that cut their hands with the turkey or? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we are there for them. <laughs> yes. So um, make sure people uh, realize. Yes. Uh, we don't want that to happen, no. <laughs> but uh, that you are open <laughs> to see the, those things. And anything you would like to add in Connorsville? Um, well, just for all locations that we are getting into these um, flu and COVID seasons, we saw 86 patients at Connorsville location yesterday. Mm -hmm. And so 
Wow. Um, yeah. <laughs> and for um, to let everybody know that we work really hard and really fast to get everybody through, um, get them a good evaluation and good treatment. And we do do a lot of education as well. Um, you know, even if you have a sick child and they test negative for everything, but they do still have an illness. So we do a lot of education, especially on respiratory distress, or if that child, if we're seeing them early on in the illness, if they would take a turn for the worse, we educate them on what to know, to watch for if they would need emergency services. And that goes for um, the elderly population as well. So there was no need to go to the ED. <laughs> right, right. And I will promise you, if you show up at the urgent care when you truly need the ED, we will send you that way, you know, versus um, once you're in the ED, it, they can't send you to urgent care and say right. you need urgent care. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So and that's a, that's been a, a really good and great point. And we want to thank you for joining us today. Thank you. On Let's Talk Together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Let's shine by seeing the best in all of us and by looking out for each other. Let's stay healthy. Let's shine together.